Are you the outdoors? Good lord, no wonder they put you on death duty. You know what, smartass? I don't see you bragging about your life before all this. Guessing you weren't Mr. Macho Man strutting his stuff around at school. Fair enough. Ah, but seriously, you've pestered me. What about you? What kind of stuff are you into, kid? What do your days look like before all this? You're going to be an asshole about it, but I'm already crapping in a bucket in my basement, so it can't be much worse. I was vice president of our AV club at school, and I spent most of my afternoons visiting my grandma at her old folks' home while uh, mom was at work. I ain't going to laugh at you, kid. I'm the last person who should be throwing shit around. No pun intended. At least you're not the last person. Yeah. Thank God for that. Quickly and happily falling into the routine of bonding with his new friend over the radio, Jamie starts to forget the dangers of this world as he continues to work on his outpost in Weston. Abruptly reminded of the potentially deadly side effects of complacency, Jamie is stunned not by his near brush with death, but the thought of such a thing occurring to his new companion. Jamie and Devin had shared laughs, had kept each other company, but all in a singular moment, Jamie knew that their agreed ignorance couldn't continue. Kid, we've been talking long enough that I know you're not stupid, and I've held off on this probably longer than I should have, but we have to talk about your mother. I don't know what you're about to say, man, but you better be careful choosing your next words. Devin, I know it's hard. I wish I didn't, but I do. That thing upstairs ain't your mama. It's a threat. It's a threat that if you don't handle, could be the end of you. The fuck you know about it? Did you kill your mother when this happened? Or your wife? Did you not even have a family? You don't know shit, Jamie. Devin, listen to me. These things aren't people. I struggled with the same thing at first too. But after seeing the things I've seen, doing the things I've done, whatever was once there is gone. Doing the things you've done? Tucked away in your farm? Screw you, Jamie. I know you've been full of shit. What fucking cop who's afraid of the outdoors owns a farm? You're a liar, and you're not going to tell me shit about my mother. I know you're upset, kid, but this ain't the time to be playing pretend. If you let me, I can help you. I can walk you through it so you'll be safe so that you can survive this. Surviving by becoming a murderer? Go fuck! Shit. Devin? 
I'm getting off. Mom heard me. I have to be quiet. Following the argument with Devin, Jamie can't help but feel the sting of his words. Too much of Jamie had slipped away, or had been forced down during this whole trial, suppressing all the painful emotions that waited in the back of his mind in ambush. Smothering his worries for Devin, Jamie hopes to at least vent his fury and frustration against a deserving target, planning another burn to clear even more of the dead from West Point. Struggling all morning to get the necessary preparations in place and fending off the relentless infected, Jamie is faced with only more anger as the cruiser's battery dies with a pathetic whimper. Left isolated and unhinged, Jamie can't bear to head back home yet as he worries his radio will remain silent throughout the night. Instead, he opts to explore one of the roads leading to his sanctuary and is delighted to find ample sources of relief. I haven't felt the need to ride on you for a while, which I'll call a victory for sure. Since my last entry, I've finally contacted someone on the radio. His name is Devin. He's just a kid. But at least it's someone to feel human with again. I already worry for him. Hell, I always worry for myself. But this kid, he doesn't know what it's like. He doesn't know how horrific the world truly is. Today, while I was out scouting between my home and West Point, I realized that the dead are inching closer and closer, day by day. If left unchecked, soon they'll be knocking down my door. Jamie.
As Jamie stacks up the bodies of the undead, he begins to tell himself that not only is he defending himself, but potentially saving the other survivors of this world from their wretched claws. Whether or not it's true, Jamie uses the thought as a crutch for his resolve as his legs ache and his heart breaks with each blast from his shotgun. I'm ready. Tell me what I have to do.